A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary of blood, and that is, that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he's appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it's appointed that human beings die once, and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. Sing to the new Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he's done marvelous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. Sing to the Lord, for he has done Lord has made his salvation known in the sight of nations. He's revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song. With trumpets and the song of the horn, sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Our Lord Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said of Jesus, He's possessed by Beelzebub. By the prince of demons he drives out demons. Summoning him, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? The kingdom is divided against itself. The kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, the house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. Amen. I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they have said he has an unclean spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. So my brothers and sisters of Christ, you can see I'm in a home. I'm still in uh, Cape Girardeau. Uh, and uh, I did my Facebook Live, Father Imbrato Live, this morning. So check that out. So just a couple of comments on the first reading and the gospel. The first reading, of course, from Hebrews is used by our Christian brothers and sisters who are not Catholic to say that Catholics um, contradict Scripture, don't obey Scripture, that Christ died once for all, and that the holy sacrifice of the Mass, right, we are, we are saying the sacrifice happens over and over and over again. But in the Catholic mindset, Catholic theology, we know that Christ died once for all. And that what we do is make that sacrifice come present in every single Mass. And that is entirely within the capability, the omnipotence of God. Because God knows no time and space. He is outside of time and space. 
So that sacrifice can be a continuous sacrifice, a one-time continuous sacrifice. This is why also we Catholics believe in daily conversion, that never, never can it be once saved, always saved. That indeed we are called to conversion each and every single day. And that is what it means by the fact that we eagerly await him. We eagerly await him so we can attain our eternal salvation. Now, the gospel is interesting, and there's no doubt in my mind that I talked about this last night. Uh, President Lincoln in 1858, his famous speech, A House Divided Cannot Stand. He was quoting scripture. He was quoting scripture, right? And indeed, uh, what Lincoln said is that it has to be one or the other. We can't have a nation that's half slave and half free, that that nation cannot stand. And he knew that this war was coming, that indeed uh, that would probably be what it took to overcome the division and then bring unity and healing uh, to, uh, uh, to the nation. And indeed, Jesus knew what was coming, that his crucifixion was coming, and that it would take his death to bring unity and healing, right? It's important for us to understand that united to Christ, united to Christ comes from obedience to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I remember a couple of years ago when the bishops were discussing the Eucharistic document that really brought about this three-year Eucharistic revival that we are now well into the first year. And in that discussion, they were talking about how we can't use the Eucharist to divide, that somehow uh, the Eucharist would cause division. This had to do with whether these politicians who were defiant of the Catholic faith should receive communion, and they were going on and on and on. And I, I, I preached on and, and posted some things on social media that said, the Eucharist can never divide. The Eucharist is about unity because the Eucharist is about obedience. That to receive the Eucharist, we must be in the state of grace. We must be willing, desirous to obey all that Christ taught. And so Eucharist communion is about unity. And that division comes from sin, from sin. It's disobedience that divides, right? And this is what Jesus is getting at in terms of, of uh, talking to the Pharisees, the scribes, or those who were unwilling to submit in humble obedience to all that Jesus was teaching. They were obstinate. They were obstinate in their sin. To the point where Jesus really brings it to its full extension. And he says that I say to you all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. And that's the key, right? The unforgivable sin is living in your sin to the judgment without asking for forgiveness, right? What is the unforgivable sin? What is the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? The refusal to ask for forgiveness. And if you understand, and I, I preach this all the time, if you understand the, the, the inherent role of the Holy Spirit in all the sacraments, in all the sacraments, you would understand this. I'm not going to give you a general absolution here. But as much as priests lament, uh, confessors, confessees, confessees, uh, people who come into the confessional, and we say, all right, say your act of contrition, I'll give you absolution. We get, oh my God, I'm not sorry for having offended the United States, all my sins because of the church. And I'm like, whoa, 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 slow down and think about what you're saying, right? Because there's a lot of things in the traditional confession, uh, act of contrition, that we miss. For instance, uh, 
and uh, I, I will do my best to avoid the, the near occasion of sin. We don't even want to get close to sin, right? We don't want to dabble with it, right? Uh, but, but, but priests are guilty of the same thing that we complain about. That's human nature, right? It's human nature, because this is what you get from the priest very often. God the Father of mercy through the death and resurrection of his Son has reconciled the world to himself, sent the Holy Spirit among us for forgiveness of sins, and through the ministry of the church, I, I grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of all your sins, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? How many times have you experienced that? And, and, and the, the words of absolution are so beautiful. They're so beautiful. Let me go through it slowly. I'm not going to explain it. doesn't need any explanation. I'm just going to go slowly. God, the Father of mercy, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself. And through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, uh, through the Holy Spirit, and has sent the Holy Spirit down upon us, and through the ministry of the church, see, I can't even say it slowly without mixing it up, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, I haven't given you all general absolution, all right? But uh, I want you to hear. Through the, through the Holy Spirit, the church forgives sins, right? And, and so this is, this is important for us to understand. That absolution comes through the Holy Spirit, but to a repentant sinner. And that the unforgivable sin, and the only unforgivable sin, the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is the refusal to ask Christ for his mercy, to ask God for his mercy, to repent of our sins, right? And that is what was happening here with the Pharisees, the scribes, the leaders of the Jews. Um, so my brothers and sisters in Christ, we have the beauty of the holy sacrifice of the mass, we have the beauty of, of that sacrament that goes hand in hand, with the, with the Eucharist, with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, the beautiful uh, 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 sacrament of con reconciliation, confession, penance, whatever you want to call it. Let's thank our Lord every single day for His mercy. Let's thank our Lord every day for these two great sacraments. Uh, and let us always, always uh, pray for those who are Resisting, right? Resisting Christ's mercy, resisting the sacraments, uh, resisting uh, repentance, because, you know, Christ says, and this is why he went to great lengths, great lengths to bring the Pharisees, the scribes, the leaders of the Jews into the fold, right? Because he knew how hardened their hearts were. He desires that all be saved and none be lost. We need to desire the same thing. And that's why every day we should be praying for the conversion of the world and those who have hardened hearts that they will grasp or grab on to Christ's boundless mercy.